right? So we can do that. Uh, we can actually use one print statement to actually take care of this. All right, so what, once we display this, now let's go ahead and create a new line character. So just like the backslash T, the new line character is going to take or move the position from where it's at to the next line, right? It's going to move the position. So if it prints score and letter grade, it's print score with a tab, letter grade. It's going to the new line character backslash N together. Once the interpreter sees that, it's going to move the position from that pos from here to the next line. So the, so the position will be here right now. Now we want to go ahead and display the first score, right? So now let's display. Um, so let's see how we're going to do this. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and once once we're on a new line, let's go ahead and display score one all right let's go ahead and concatenate all the so let's so let's go ahead and concatenate this sorry concatenate mm, let's see well, well well there are multiple ways to actually print this i don't want to use multiple print statements we can actually use one right but using one print statement also also does the job um let's see what's going to be um because I don't want to confuse you with all, all the concatenation and all that stuff. I don't want to do that. All right, so let's okay. Let, let, let's let's just let's just use the, you know a couple of print statements. All right, so let's print out. Well, let, let's stick with this. Let's go ahead and print out score with a tab and letter grade. No new line character, right? The print function by default does that. It print it, it by default when it prints out what you've told it to print, it it, it creates a new line character by default. It's going to move the position from where it's after this. It's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. And once it's done, let's go ahead and call another print print function that's going to print out the score and then a letter grade. So, print out. In this case, score one, okay, which will be given here as an argument, and then let's go ahead and have another argument which is going to be. Let's have a tab, okay, backslash t. Then let's have another argument, which is going to be the letter grade. Now the letter grade, remember we have a function that's going to take over, which is determine grade. So determine grade, let's call that function and pass in score one. Score one, so this function is going to go ahead and return a string, which is the letter grade, right? And then, so that's this whole, let's see. Actually, let's see what's happening here. So in order to actually, we, we I don't want to create multiple print statements. so. Let's have the score just be displayed, and then let's concatenate it with a with a backslash t. Now we cannot concatenate. And when you try to tell when Python tries to do this, it's going to complain and say that I cannot go ahead and con uh, convert. Because over here, what we are doing is we are trying to um, we are trying to concatenate a float to a string. It's, Python is going to complain and say I cannot go ahead and do this. You know, by itself, it, it will say it cannot. It cannot do this implicitly. It cannot convert a float to a to a string. You know, it's going to tell us to do it ourselves. Just so, you know, you know, we don't. We know, it doesn't want to lose anything. You know, on you know by 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 itself. It wants us to do it, so we take responsibility for it. It cannot do that implicitly. So you have to go 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 ahead and do that explicitly. Explicitly, so we can use a string function, str function, around the score. Basically, we are converting it to a string, and now we are concatenating it to a string. It wouldn't have a problem going going ahead to concatenate a string to a string, so we're concatenating the score. Okay, actually we can actually we can also format it. We can also format it, you know, just to be. We can do it and format it too, but it's fine. This is this will also work. So we're concatenating the score to a tab, and then we're also going to concatenate it to the grade, the letter grade, right? That's this whole thing is going to be one argument. I didn't want to create multiple arguments, so. I mean multiple print functions, so let's use one print function for that, and then let's have a comma here and pass in the second argument, which is basically going to be the same as this. So we change it a bit. And when I p paste this, you realize that I'm going off the screen here. Now this line over here is like a guideline for me, not to exceed 80 characters on a line, right? It's it's a Python standard not to exceed 80 characters on a line. So I'm going to go ahead and break this line into two. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to mess it. Up. I'm just going to break it into two. Before you break any lines into two, into two in Python, you have to type in the backslash. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the backslash here like this, and then hit enter. So now it's broken into two. I still have my second argument here. All right. So the second argument now is going to be score two. 
and then determine grade of score 2, print it out. Have a comma for the third argument going off the screen. So, you know, let's just break this so it's organized. Let's just break it somewhere. Instead of breaking it here, all right, let's see. Let's bring it back so it's clear. All right, so instead of, let's break it here so we have everything organized. Backslash, enter. Okay, and then over here too. Backslash, enter. So everything is lined up nicely. Score three, determine a grade of score three. Comma, backslash, enter. Score four, determine a grade of score four. Then comma, backslash, enter. And then that's score five. Determine a grade of score five. By default, when you pass an argument into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space. In this case, we want we want them displayed, okay, like you know, with a new line separating them. By default, they are displayed with a space, but we'll see how they are displayed, you know, you know and then we'll fix it. So that will do it, right? That will do it. So over here, we get the scores in main. We, ask, we get the scores, and then we want to go ahead and, and call print table, print table of result here. Print table of result, passing in these scores, score one, score two, like that, right? And then hopefully it prints, actually, <laughs> I said hopefully. It should print this, yeah, hopefully it should print it if we did everything right. So let's try this out. But we realize that we've only defined the functions here. We've only defined them. We haven't called any function yet. So when we run this program, nothing is going to happen. We have to go ahead and call the function. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and call main, because if you don't call it, nothing happens. Everything is in main, so let's go ahead and call main. If we're, we're missing anything, we'll, we'll see. So let's run this, save it where I normally save the Python files. Which is on the deck. Sorry about the beep. I mean, my school's library, by the way. <laughs> All right, so it's on the desktop. I have a shortcut for it. Program challenges. Save it in Chapter 5. Create a new folder for test average and grade and I save this the same way test average and grade all right the pi all right let's see if we have any errors that was an old program all right so please enter score one right, let's enter let's make let's make sure we have all a's for this one let's enter lenty let's see 90 to, uh, 90 to 100 is A. So let's make sure we have all A's just to test it and see. 90, score 2, 90, score 3, 90, score 4, 90, score 5, 90. Hit enter. All right, so we can see that it's, dis it's displaying it correctly. We can see score letter grade. But the thing is, it's displaying it horizontally. We want it displayed vertically, right? That's, by, that's because by default, the print function over here by default, the print function over here is separating these separate. So this is this whole thing here is one argument, and then we see a comma here, and then this whole thing is another argument, and you see a comma. When you pass an argument into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space separating them. So this whole whole is one argument here, and we can see the space separating them, and then this whole thing is another argument. We can see a space separating them, and this whole thing is another argument with a space separating them. But you can change the separator. There's a separator. The, the default separator is a space. You can change it from a space to a new line character. So the new line character, okay. So you, you can so you can pass it as another argument and say SEP, which stands for separator, is equal to the new, a new line character separator. Which just change just change it from a space to a backslash n to a new line character. Meaning separates each of these arguments with a new line character. When it sees the backslash n. It knows that it's a new line character, meaning move the positions, meaning meaning instead of the space separating them, separate them with a with a new line. Once you type in the once you display the first argument, move the position from where it's at to the next line. Once you display the first argument this way, move the position from where it's at to the next line and display the next. And once you display that, move the position from where it's at to the next line and then display it. So that's that's what we've done here. We've changed the separator. Now let's run this again. Still type in 90 for now. Let's just make sure that everything is working. 90 for all scores. And we can see that it's working now. 
you can see it's working. So score 90, that's a grade A. You can actually have two more two tabs to separate these well. So backslash T, another backslash T, backslash T, backslash T here, backslash T, backslash T. Now let's let's try in different grades. Let's try in 90, 70, 30, 90, 95, uh, 23. And you can see it's working 90A, 70C, 30F, 95A, 23F. Yeah, I think the backslash, this was too much, I guess. The space, it's fine, but we can see it's working. All right, so, so, so yes, the only thing we have to do is I just want to set, put a space after the questions. Okay, that's, that is the inputs and then the output. And the way we can do this, this, this is the function that is displaying the results. This is the function that is asking for is asking for it we can get we can put type in something here to separate them or we can actually fix it here too we can actually fix it here too over here we can see that this is what is printing out this the header which is the score in the letter grade so we can actually type in a backslash n here we, we know that a backslash n when the interpreter sees it okay that's the first thing so it sees that and then it moves the position from here Okay, once it sees the backslash and it moves the position from here to the next line. The input function, after it, after it, it displays the input function and user types in something. Okay, that also ends with a new line by default. So it asks the user to type in something, right, over here. The user types in something, and then the case will be, once the user types in enter, the, the position will be here. Okay, but it sees, before it displays the output, it sees the, back, the backslash n, so it moves the position from here to the next line because it will be here by default, but it sees the backslash n. So it moves the position from here, right, to here, because that's the backslash n. And anything that comes after the backslash n will be displayed from here going. So there will be a space here. So, th so this is one way to fix it. So when I try this, type in, let's say, 20, 20, just, this is just to test it out, okay. And again, we haven't we haven't validated this. We haven't uh, ha we don't have any check to see to uh, to allow the user to type in anything, um, to, uh, to to allow the user to type in strictly anything from zero to one hundred. Okay, the user can type in negative two and it's still going to work. But we can have a while loop, like I mentioned, to check that. Okay, Th that that is something you uh, you can do, right? Okay, so now let's try this, and we can see there's a new line here. So that's one way to fix it. Let's go back to square one. I removed it. Let's try something else. So now we are back to square one. No space separates in them. Another way to do it over here is this is the function asking, asking for the input. This is the function displaying the output. Over here, we can just call the print function. Now, when you call the print function and you type in something like this, it's going to go ahead and do exactly that. Once you type in your input, oops, 247, let's just try it again. Again, we should have something to check, check that, but for this program, we don't have it. You can type in input, make sure we have input, input validation, okay? All right, so we can see it's printing out exactly what we told it to print. It display, it, it, um, it asks for the input, display what we um, told it to print, and then it displayed our output. So by default, when you use a print function to display something, it's going to, it's going to actually go, it's going to go ahead and display whatever you told, you gave it as an argument. So you can see it's displaying whatever we told it, right? We can see it here. But by default, when the print function is done displaying your, your whatever you told it to print, you, to print out, it's going to end with a new line character. By default, that's how it works. After it's done printing out whatever you told it to print out, okay, the position will, will be here. But by default, the print function always ends with a new line character when you enter the line break. So after it's done printing, it's going to move the position from where it's at over here, okay, from the, from the end of the line over here to the next line. So anytime the pre user print function, after it's done printing whatever you told it to print, it's going to move the position, for position from here, okay, to the next line like this. And anything that comes after this print function will be displayed from here going. Anything that comes after this print function will be displayed from the next line going. That's why this output print table result came after, right after this on the next line. Okay, came right, right after this on the next line. Because by default, when you tell the print function to print whatever you, to whatever, um, you give it to print, it's going to print that and move the position from where it's at to the next line here, right? So to the next line. So anything that comes after that print function is, is, is displayed on that next line. Now, when you call the print function passing in nothing, you are still telling it to print something. 
But over here, you're tell but that's something you're telling to print this nothing, okay? It's, it's, it's kind of uh, funny. Over here, you're telling to print nothing. Nothing over here. So it's still going to go ahead and print nothing on this line. It's still, it's still going to go ahead and do that. Yep, it's printed nothing. But because by default, the print function always ends in a new line, after I print out nothing on this line, it's still going to go ahead and move the position from where it's at to the next line over here. So it's still going to go ahead and print out nothing, but it's going to go ahead and move the position from where it's at over here to the next line. And then anything that comes after that print function over here is going to be displayed from this line going, okay? It's going to be displayed from this line going because it's going to print nothing here. By default, the print function ends with a new line, new line, a line break. So it's going to move the position. After it's done printing nothing, it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. Anything that comes after the print function is going to be displayed from this point, point on going. Okay, from this point on going. So the print table which comes after the print function is going to be displayed from this point going. So by default, so basically when you call the print function passing in nothing, you're basically printing an empty line. And because of the way the print function works, which, 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 which basically leaves a new, um, ends with a new line character, prints out, prints out a new line and move the position from where it's at, okay? Move the position from where it's at here to the next line. So basically when you call the print function passing in nothing, you're basically printing out an empty line and then moving to the next line. Anything that comes after that is displayed on that next line going. So that's another way to fix it. Let's try this and see. Let's try in 10, 50, 70, 99, 45. We can see that we have another new line here to separate it. So 10F, 50F, okay, anything 60 or below is F. 70, okay. 70, 70 to 79 is a C. 99, 9200 is an A. 45 below 60. Below 60 is an F. So we can see it's working. And we are using functions to do this. Now, certainly, you know, you can use loops to accept the values or anything, but this is just to test functions. And this, this certainly works also. Um, and also, you can have input, input validation here. All right, so this program works. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them, as always. Always. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, as always. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good sleep. Have a nice time, as always. <laughs> and I'll see you next time with the next program, okay? Bye-bye.